I remember it like it was just last night. I had a friend who always would tell me, you look like a pageant boy. You look like a show boy. Never knew what that meant till a few years later. But I always took it as a compliment. Back in December of 1997, that friend, who we'll call Derek, aka Felicia Gallant, who was a female impersonator, asked me to accompany him in a duet for an upcoming New Year's Eve show. Johnny Gill and Stacy Lattisaw. Where do we go from here? The reception was from the audience was great. There was a male impersonator by the name of Rabbit who had a production company called Rabbitino Productions. And Rabbitino Productions traveled the southern part of the United States traveling and entertaining at different and various clubs. They asked me to join their production company as one of the male leads. I remember the owner of Rabbitino Productions was a very competitive spirit. And we had traveled to some clubs that actually had these competitions called pageants. I had never done a pageant, saw them and thought that it was something that I could do, but never had competed. So Rabbit pushed me and actually sponsored me for my first pageant, Mr. Black Tennessee Universe. And somehow, some way, not knowing anything else about pageants, I won this pageant. This pageant was a preliminary to a national pageant. And that's when my journey into the world of pageantry started. I remember driving all the way up from Nashville, Tennessee, down to Atlanta, Georgia. The competition was the Mr. and Miss Black Universe pageant. I drove those four hours in my red Ford Escort with myself, my partner, and the female impersonator that would be accompanying me for the talent portion of the competition. All in a hatchback with all of my clothes and their clothes and all of my props. But as I rolled up to the Georgia World Congress Center, I saw a fleet of U-Haul trucks. Jumping out of the back of the U-Haul trucks were dancers. Dancers were stretching. You saw props and it looked like it was a movie set or a production company putting on a major production. At that point, I knew I was way out of my league. I did not let that stop me. I competed and of course, out of 28 boys, I finished number 15. The top 10 competed the final night of competition. There was this MC by the name of Miss Sophia McIntyre. Sophia was hilarious. Sophia wore a gray wig with old lady clothes. But she was a man with a mustache and had muscles. I thought this was so hilarious. And although everything that Miss Sophia said came out funny, I took her very serious at one point when she stated, all of you contestants that competed this weekend that are not here in the top 10, you did something wrong. And if you want to know what to do right, you need to be watching the individuals that gather right. So we have these seats designated for you. I did exactly what Miss Sophia said. So I went and I sat in those seats that were designated for the individuals that did not make the top 10. And I watched that competition from beginning to end. When they said white presentation, they meant white presentation. It was like looking at a stage full of angels, females in white, floor length white gowns, and the gents in all white tuxedos. Hallelujah. 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 Then when formal wear came, they modeled so debonair and eloquently, they looked very rich. And I too wanted to be like those individuals on stage. 
I was so impressed with the entertainment and their talents. Dance, dancers doing six o'clock kicks, pirouettes, drum, drama, skits, live singing, you name it. The props that they had, OMG. The caliber and excellence of these entertainers that were competing was on another level than what I had ever experienced for myself personally. But I looked at these individuals and I said, I can do exactly what they can do now that I know what I'm supposed to do. And on that day is when I fell in love with the world of pageantry. When love came and hit me in the eyes.